Okay, what I thought I'd look at today is the notion that sharp knives are safer in the kitchen than blunt ones. I've often heard it said by people that you're more likely to cut yourself with a blunt knife than with a sharp knife. That doesn't sound like it makes an awful lot of sense, but um, we're going to test it out today and see what happens. I'm obviously not going to cut myself, but um, I'm going to look at maybe why blunt knives might be less safe than sharp knives. So I've got a very sharp kitchen knife here, a sabatier, and I've got an ordinary cheapy kitchen knife. Now, that's not a bad knife, but it's not sharp. This one I have sharpened this morning and it's very sharp, so I'm not going to even put my finger on the blade there. So let's have a look and see what happens when you use a sharp knife. So a sharp knife, you're just going to cut a tomato. And it just glides through the tomato like that. You see the way it, I can rest that, I can just rest that on the skin. And I'm not actually putting any pressure on that at all. And that's just slicing straight through. Okay, right, so let's have a look and see what happens when we do the same thing with a not so sharp knife. The, f the first thing to know is that the, the, it doesn't, it will cut the skin like that, but to get through the skin, there's a bit of pressure required. And sometimes, if it's a really blunt knife, you end up kind of doing this and piercing the skin first so that the knife will take and so on and then when you get down to to the smaller pieces you're struggling to get a clean cut and you end up either sawing or crushing and you ruin the slices of tomato so we end up with a kind of mashed slice of tomato as opposed to a, a nice clean one and so not only do you not get a not get such a good result but um but where you're putting more pressure on the knife here you're less you're less likely to be in control of it um not so obvious with the tomato i'm just going to clear up and we'll try the same thing same sort of thing with an onion okay so round 2 an onion again my sharp knife here so i'm going to cut the onion straight in half and that cuts nice and cleanly So, and again, the knife just glides into the, and critically, the knife cuts as soon as you start sliding it like that. As soon as you start slicing, the knife is cutting. So let's get our piece of onion here and chop it up. So I can just slice the onion up into nice pieces like that. Ever so easily. Nice doing exactly what I want it to do, you see. It's cutting exactly where I put it. And now I can cut that into nice fine slices. And the reason I'm not going to cut myself with this sharp knife is because I'm not I'm keeping my fingers out the way. So the the knife's doing what I want rather than what it wants. You shouldn't, you shouldn't cut yourself with any knife, obviously, but uh, but the trouble is with a with a less sharp knife, you're more likely to lose control. So let's move those onion bits out of the way. None of this is going to go to waste, by the way. So it's um this is going to be my lunch. I'll make myself a salsa or something like that. Okay. Right. So same thing now. The other half of the onion with the not so sharp knife. See it's not it's not biting and I'm pressing the same with the same weight as I was with the sharp knife. So I end up see that's kind of slid off the skin of the onion there but and, and you can see what's happening here is that it just I'm having to put a lot more pressure on the knife to get it to go through the onion. And obviously the harder the harder the things you're cutting, the harder that's going to be. So if that was a butternut squash or something like that, I'd be really leaning on this knife to make it cut. And that's when you're going to lose control. So, so instead of your, your classic chef-y cutting method, which is to keep your fingers curled in and cut like that um, and slice, 
or to or to keep your fingers out the, I'm not so chefy but uh, keep your fingers out the way like this you see what's going to happen here is this knife where's the sharp knife if I put it there it's going to cut straight down the blunt knife is going to go wallop so anyway let's just have a quick look and see what happens here so I have to it's cutting okay oops see what happened there the skin separated and slid and the knife hit my hit my thumb it didn't cut me I'm lucky so there we go so that's kind of sliced up now I'm going to try and cut this into little dice like I did with the other one and it's just not playing at all and it's gone completely to pieces and so now what I'll end up doing is instead of instead of a nice controlled slicing motion and getting my lo lovely little onion dice I'll end up doing stuff like this and it's ever so easy for that to just slip slip off the board you know for, for me to get frustrated and start the, the harder I'm pressing the more likely I am to make a, a dangerous mistake or to, to accidentally get my fingers in the way of the blade like that it happens so um, so there you go so that is why a sharp knife is less likely to cut you than a blunt knife. Sounds counterintuitive, but the reason is because a sharp knife does what you want it to do, and you don't want to cut your fingers, so a sharp knife cuts the food. A blunt knife doesn't do exactly what you want to do, and so you'll be trying to cut the food, but the knife will be fighting you. So I hope that's been useful. Do check out my website, atomicshrimp.com, for more interesting videos and lots of other stuff.